Hi everyone, Tundileya here and welcome to the Africa History Channel. After 5 months, the channel hit 1000 subscribers in April. I found this channel out of pocket, so the fact that you watch, share and subscribe makes it worth it. Thank you. Let's get to 10,000 subscribers even faster. Also, many thanks to Kwame, whose comment in the last episode pointed out the correct pronunciation for the names. I'll try to do them better in this one. In the last episode, we explored the earlier Akan states before the rise of the Ashanti, ending on their immediate predecessors, the Dentira. In this episode, we look at how Ashanti defeated Dentira and became the largest and longest lasting empire the Akan people produced. Let's get started. After Osei Tutu said no to the demands of his erstwhile Denchira overlord, war became inevitable. Osei Tutu's great priestly advisor, Okomfu Anokie, rightly pointed out to Osei Tutu that, in spite of his reforms, all of the Ashanti forces were not up to one wing of the Denchira army. They needed to increase their numbers. The mythologized version of what happened next was this, that Okomfu Anokie told Osei Tutu he would use his magical means to cause large portions of the Denchiria forces to defect to the Ashanti side and he was able to make this happen, swelling their numbers. Again, this myth is a representation of the events that happened and our aim is to tell a historical version of these events. Denchiria would be supreme in the Ofen Pra Basin for only 42 years, from 1659 until 1701, when the Ashanti defeated them at the Battle of Feyase. On its rise, Denchiria under Buamponsem had defeated their own predecessors, the Adansi. During the war between them, in Tiamwal Nanko, the leader of Abusu, an Adansi town close to the Denchiria capital, particularly offended Buamponsem when it was still unclear who would win. Ntiamal captured some Denchiria royals, took their gold and executed them. After he won the war, Bwampunsem's revenge was fierce. He reduced Abusu and turned the town into what was essentially a holding pen for humans who would be sacrificed upon the death of members of the Denchiria royal family. As time went on, even Denchiria people who got into Bwampunsem's bad books were sent to Abusu to have the same fate as the original Adansi inhabitants of the town. The Abusu became known as Bontumwafo, meaning Bwamponsem's red clay people. This either referred to the red clay used to paint the faces of those who were selected to be sacrificed or the fact that their blood was mixed into the soil to bury the royals they were sacrificed for. Ntim Gyakari would continue this practice when he succeeded Bwamponsem. When Ntim Gyakari's mother died, one of his wives, who was Abusu, alerted her people since there would have been a great number of sacrifices in the Queen Mother's honor. Most of the Bontuman foe of Abusu therefore fled in great numbers to the Ashanti and declared allegiance to Osei Tutu after swearing various oaths of loyalty and protection. Their leader was called Agiebi. Other defections from Dentira occurred. A certain Kwakwa Bene, who was a Denkira official in a town called Asabi, also fled with plenty supporters to the Ashanti side due to conflicts with Ntim Gyakari. While Osei Tutu was in the Denkira capital as a hostage, he had made friends with a young royal called Yim Awere. It appears Yim had been condemned in some way by Buam Ponsem and then Ntim Gyakari. He also sought refuge with large numbers of supporters to his rising friend in Komasi. Each of these groups swelled Ashanti numbers, increasing their strength. All three had to fight their way out of Denchira and arrived as seasoned fighters. Osei Tutu, with Anoki's advice, provided them land and titles around Kumasi. As word of Osei Tutu's accommodation of these defectors reached Denchira, more and more of the subjects fled into Ashanti territory to the north and placed themselves under Osei Tutu's protection. They included the Sabis, the Nkawe, the Atwena Besia, the Ayamfori, Ahafo, and the Dao Dao. Even members of Ntim Gyakari's personal entourage defected. Kierema D, Ntim Gyakari's influential head drummer, left with his sister, Boatema Tum, and her numerous followers. 
the brothers Aquadan and Noamua, the Dentira royal horn blowers, also defected, going with the golden horns and their followers. Many more left, depleting Dentira numbers and strengthening the Ashanti force. It is easy to see how this wave of defections came to bear the supernatural nature that the myth surrounding Okomfo and Nokia's magic gives it. It was unstoppable. For three years, from 1699 to 1701, this mobilization would continue until the inevitable clash would occur. The Dutch leave accounts of the event. They report that in 1699, trade from the interior dwindled and the people had war on their mind. By June 1700, the only goods they could sell was firearms and in May 1701, heavy warfare broke out between the Denkira and what they called the Kwaman Coalition which we know was the newly formed Ashanti coalition Oseitu to lead. The peoples between the coast and the interior were reported to have done everything to ensure that the disrupted supply of arms and ammunition to the Dentira, while routing more to the Ashanti coalition due to their decades of enduring Dentira's iron fist. Ntim Diakari would first attack and drive Ashanti from three key towns on the march north, Adunku, Abotem and Aputoya. He was equipped with firearms and Dutch cannons. Emboldened by these victories and without the military mind of his predecessor, Yakari set off in pursuit towards Kumasi, hoping to crush the Ashanti. However, these first defeats were all part of the astute Oseitutu's plan to lure the Denkira into the perfect ambush spot he had chosen, Feyase. Unknown to Yakari, he had only met a small part of the Ashanti army. Deceived that their forces were still much smaller than his, he believed he had defeated them. At Feyase, the full Ashanti coalition fell upon them and utterly destroyed the Dentira army. While Intim Yakari escaped the Battle of Feyase, he was killed by the people of Adunku, who he had first defeated in this Ashanti war. The victors spent 15 days sacking and looting the Dentira capital. The Dutch reported that their victory occurred in November 1701, which would indicate that the whole war lasted for seven months. The remnants of the Dentiria fled south of the Offing River. After this victory, Osei Tutu, under the guidance of Okomfo Anoke, would create the founding story of the Ashanti people, incorporating well-known Akan symbolism like the Golden Stool to create something their precursors had not done. Instead of the victorious Oyoko clan centered in Kumasi and led by Osei Tutu to turn the victory into a Kumasi one, they forged a new state identity that included most of the peoples of the Ofin Pra Basin and created a strong national Ashanti identity, a lesson in state building for modern African states that continue to struggle with identity. They will rule the area for another 200 years. Join us in the next episode as we start a new series elsewhere on the African continent. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to help grow the channel. Thank you very much for listening.